right, uh, we're here with uh, Doc Gooden. Uh, it's a pleasure, man. It's uh, it's really an honor to sit here and chat with you, and appreciate you taking a few minutes to to uh, sit here with us and talk some baseball and, and whatever else you want to chat about. Um, so one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, so 1996, you become a Yankee. And what did it feel like putting the pinstripes on the first time, the first time you put the Yankee pinstripes on? It was different. You know, um, being a Met, being drafted by the Mets, you grow up, you hate the Yankees. Not literally hate the Yankees. Right, yeah. There's that natural rivalry, rivalry yeah, there, you know? sure. So uh, I never could see myself wearing a Yankee uniform, but then I talked to Mr. Simon Brennan when I was you know, spending from 1995 about joining the Yankees. The Mets wanted to cut ties, which I understood. And when I finally joined the Yankees, I remember being in spring training in the bathroom in front of the mirror for about 15 minutes, just looking at myself with the uniform on, with the Yankee uniform yeah. on. Yeah. You know, Surreal just, feeling, I'm sure. It was. But um, great time with the Yankees, first class organization. Um, I was glad they gave me a chance to finish my career in New York. That's what I wanted to do, stay in New York. And won the World Series 96 was great. And then in 2000, obviously, being with the Yankees, being the Mets in the World Series, it was great, even though I'm a Met at heart. <laughs> but uh, just yeah, the idea of right. putting the Yankee pinstripe on and playing the old Yankee Stadium where all the yeah. greats played there, just a tremendous film. You are amongst a select few. You can count probably on one hand the number of players that have been carried off in Yankee Stadium. Oh, that was incredible. Before my teammates to do what they did um, after the no-hitter, especially that year, the way it started, I started out 0-3. And if you ever heard of a pitcher being benched, that means you don't get in the game if you're up 10 nothing or you're down 10 nothing. And Joe Torre actually benched me. Yeah, mop up, mop up duty, right? Not, not even. <laughs> you just, <laughs> I just get up on my own throwing in the bullpen because they was trying to decide whether they're going to release me or send me down. Unfortunately, my good friend David Cohen had got the aneurysm in his arm. Yep. And when that happened, I got me back into the rotation. And my third start back in was a no hitter that I ran up on. Seattle Mariners. Seattle Mariners, one of the, not to blow smoke, but one of the toughest lineups in baseball at the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Edgar Martinez, Ken Griffey Jr. I mean, you're talking about Hall of Famers, A Rod. Constantly, guys. And the way the game works, I mean, the first thing I could, I almost got knocked out the first thing. And the first guy I walked, A Rod hit a ball. I mean, a good shot with Joe Williams made an unbelievable catch in the center field. Double black, uh, brags off at first base. Had he not caught that ball, you're looking at, I'm down one nothing, man on third, no outs, and Griffey's up. <laughs> so kind of what he yeah. And then you reverse it. Not an ideal situation for the first <laughs> inning of the not game. Not at all. Not at all, especially when you've been struggling. But then, you, you know, reverse that and then end up throwing a no-hitter. I mean, just a tremendous, tremendous feat. So, one question that I wanted to ask you. Now, we all have the cliche kind of questions. Uh, you know, who do you want to go to war with type things. Bottom of the ninth, you're throwing a gym. Game seven of the World Series. One batter's coming up. Who don't you want to see in the box? Right now, I'd say Chili Davis for sure. Chili Davis. Chili Davis is one of those guys that... Well, he was Former the, teammate with the Yankees. Well, actually, when he came to the Yankees, I went to Cleveland. That's, oh, okay. I still, still couldn't get him out. <laughs> 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 but uh, he was one of those guys when he was with the Giants, and I was the man's top of my game. If I had my good self, he may get two or three hits. If I had my bad self, he was going to hit it out of the park. I remember, you know, I can, I can admit it now. I wouldn't admit it when I was playing, but I hit him intentionally a couple of times. Just basically trying to he intimidate deserved him. deserved it. Yeah, well, <laughs> trying to intimidate him. Throwing on this chin, trying to make it didn't work. Just one of those guys where you had to get the guys out in front because I couldn't get him out. And so that would be the least guy I wanted to see up at that time. All right. I'm going to reverse that. You've thrown a gym. You're at home. So the bottom of the ninth, your team's coming up. It's a tie game. What teammate do you want in the box? What teammate do I want in the box? What the the to hitter? Win, to win the game for you. Oh, to win the game? Wow. I play with so many great players. I would say probably Keith Hernandez. Keith Hernandez. I'll say Keith Hernandez. Clutch guy, clutch hitter. Professional hitter. We threw Keith Hernandez out of the baseline earlier in the season. Is that right? So we, you know, the show's the baseline. So at the end of the end of the show, if you've done something wrong, right. we throw you out of the baseline. Oh, yes. He had a pretty interesting take on the Ronald Acuna beaning earlier in the last season. Uh, Jose Urania beaned oh. Ronald Acuna first pitch of the game. Well, I might get thrown out of the, off the what, baseline also. Out of the baseline. So we're not going to throw I, you no, out of the baseline. The only reason I say I agree with Keith, I, I think that. it was too much made of that because if that happened in the '80s, that's no big deal. Nobody says anything. Yeah. It was normal. Like say if um. Strawberry got hit, and we're playing the Cardinals. Okay, I'm going to hit Coleman, and I'm going <laughs> to hit Jack Clark. That's just the way it is. And you hit the other pitcher as well, unless it's Nolan Ryan. You don't touch that guy. No, no, no. Because they got a bat also. Robin Ventura figured out that you, you can't charge Nolan Ryan. He figured it out pretty quick. <laughs> but, I mean, what, like you said, I thought too much of me. And then, like, um, Rick Sutcliffe, a good friend of mine, or Hershey, a good friend of mine. I was surprised to hear those guys defend the hitter in that situation. I mean, the guy's hot hitting guys. He didn't throw it his head. You know, it hit him in the back of the leg. It's nothing wrong with that. That's part of the game. I mean, that's just the way it was. It had that happened in the 80s, I'm sure back in the 70s when Gibson was playing. It's no big deal. Nobody dug in against well, Unfortunately, Gibson. now they make it a big deal. I mean, I don't understand. I'm on Keith's side with that one. How did you feel in, you know, 85, 86, where that was literally in the same breath as a comparison with Bob Gibson? 
Bob Gibson, this is the new Bob Gibson, Dwight Gooden. Incredible. Uh, a great compliment. And it made me want to go out and work even much harder just to be in that name, mentioned in his breath and watching. I've never seen him pitch, but just from when Serge, my dad told me, looking at his stats, I'm a huge baseball fan as well. And just to be mentioned in the same breath as him, a tremendous compliment. The Bob Gibson stuff is going to start coming back to surface now with the proposed rule changes that Major League Baseball is proposing lowering the mound again. And so everybody wants to talk about the last time that they lowered the mound was because Bob Gibson went out and had a dominant season. Um, so what do you think about the rule changes that Major League Baseball is proposing right now? I, I don't agree with that one. I mean, some of the changes have been great, but that one I, I totally disagree with. I mean, I understand they want a hitter's game. I mean, the hitters now, like the ballparks, the new ballparks are smaller. Even the bigger ballparks like City Field, they're bringing the fences in. And the hitters win all the pass now. Now you're talking about lowering the mile. I mean, <laughs> I mean, my goodness, I just think it's too much. I mean, I think what the pitch is doing is great, and it's still more so right now. I think it's a hitters game, and it, and it goes back and forth. You may have three years in a row where the pitchers dominate, and then it goes to the hitters. That's just the way it is. But lowering the mile, I don't think that's. So, what do you think about the idea of a, a pitch clock? Pitch clock, I, you know, it's so much stuff. I think they're doing too much complicating the game. It's a great game. It's a beautiful game, and it, it's kind of contradicting itself. And it's just my opinion, where you got the pitch clock. On the other hand, you have the replay where yeah. the, the manager can say, okay, wait one minute, he wants to see the guy, look at the TV, see the play, and then go. I mean, that's the late the game. That's well. what we say all the time, too, is, you know, baseball comes up with all these ideas, pitch clock, other things to try to speed up the game, yet the instant replay process is, it's cumbersome, and it delays things. I mean, to me, there's your fix right there. Fix the instant replay uh, issue, and the game is sped up instantly just by doing that. Oh, I agree. It's just too much going on now. It's a beautiful game. It's taking... It put too much into it, I think, messing up the game. Yeah. So overthinking you, things a little bit. Yes. You say that you're uh, you're a Met still at heart. Yes. What do you think of the Mets off season so far? I like it. You know, when the um, Brody, the new general manager, mm -hmm. came in, my first thought was this might be a conflict of interest here because he was the he was, he was literally their agent. It was Syndergaard and Degrom's agent. Right. But everything he's done, I like the moves he's making. He's being aggressive, because I always say in New York, you can't rebuild. You got to compete. You got to put a good product out on the field. Mm -hmm. This guy's putting guys out there, and hopefully the Whippons continue to give him the leash to let him do what he's doing. But I like the move the Mets made so far. I think the big thing with the Mets is just staying healthy. Yeah. And oh I'm yeah. Definitely glad they didn't trade Syndergaard. That would have been one of the worst. So season. prior to the show, Sean and I were talking that if one team out there has made themselves now, the Cincinnati Reds made some moves this offseason and improved their their ball club. But if one team has improved themselves <laughs> from not being a playoff team last year into potentially being a, a candidate to be a playoff team this year, it's the Mets. Uh, I think Brody Van Wagenen has, has exemplified the GM role after, you know, the three-headed monster that's been in, in Queens for the last couple of years with Omar Minaya and J.P. Ricciardi, uh, and they retained all those guys. Or I think J.P. Ricciardi went to maybe the Padres or someplace, but um, they seem to have changed the culture just in a few trades, and now the bullpen is locked down at the back end with Familia and, and, uh, and Diaz being there. Everybody kind of called into question that Robinson Cano trade, but now you got a, a young, controllable stud at the back end of your bullpen. So uh, I think that the Mets have improved themselves uh, to being potentially a playoff contender. I agree. Um, noticed one of your tweets that you think that the NL East is the most pitching-rich division in the Major League Baseball. Oh, definitely. I, I don't say that I can disagree with you. Yeah, pitching's right there. And um, pitching, to me, you got to have pitching. That's what wins. Over 162 games, the offense can carry you. But once you get in the postseason, if you don't have pitching, you're not going to go far. Um, I say that from experience. I remember I was with Cleveland, 98-99. Best offense in baseball. Yes. I mean, I can name all those guys. Yeah. But we didn't really that have was a pitching. I was towards the end. I didn't have nothing. Yeah. Basically, we only had Cologne. Jerry Wright was young. Yeah. Charles Nagy was average. Chad OJ. Chad OJ. So we had no yeah. pitching. So got knocked out by the Boston one year. Next year was the Yankees. If you have pitching, I mean, look at the Giants, the years they won it. Yeah. They only had maybe one guy in the lineup that you had to worry about, but they had pitching. Yeah. That's why with the Mets, with the Mets get in, or the Nationals, they get in, they'll be the da dangerous team in the playoffs. Agreed. You know, I just agree. because of the pitching. Well, the uh, Phillies, Phillies look good now, too. Who wins the NL East right now? Right now? Right now. Mets. a boy. <laughs> a boy. That's all right. I expected nothing less. I say Mets. I say Mets. I mean, Nationals going to be right there. Braves, they had a great year last year. I won't see them do that again. You don't think that the Braves have done enough to improve their, their situation based on last year? Maybe last year was a little fluky? Uh, they got talent. A lot of young, good, a lot of good young talent. But I, 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 I well... I didn't want to see them improve the pitching staff, but I think it was room for them to improve the pitching staff. Yeah. You almost expected maybe a Dallas Keuchel seem like a perfect fit to go to, to an Atlanta. Still can oh, happen. Definitely. It yes. still can happen because he's not signed. What do you think about the, the free agent climate the way it is? All these players on signed still. It's kind of like, even last year, and, and again, it's just me talking. It's my opinion. Yeah, yeah, but that's of, what we want. Right. It seems like a little bit of collusion going here. Uh, just a little bit. I mean, they give him the money, but it's like 
these teams in agreement because you got Machado and, and Harper. These guys are what 25, 26 years old in a prime career. I can understand studs. Not, I see not giving a franchise players contract. There's no reason why these guys can't be signed. I don't understand that. Agreed. So and with all the leverage that the owners currently have in this free agent climate, do you think that it's leading to a potential shutdown in 2020 when the CBA is up? Uh, I wouldn't want to say that. That would be the worst thing for baseball. I think right now baseball is kind of at the highest peak right now again. You already went through one strike in your career. You saw you saw what it did. Oh, you saw what it did. So uh, hopefully it don't come to that, and hopefully it can be avoided. But um, and things are going too well, though. The players make a lot of money. The owners make a lot of money. The fans are almost really suffering trying to get into the yeah, ballpark. Yeah, absolutely. So everything is corporate right now. So something with that needs to be changed, I think. Well, I want to say thank you uh, yeah, to a baseball absolutely. legend, uh, Dwight Gooden. Uh, appreciate him coming on yeah, the One more question course. I have to ask for you because my, 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 uh, I told my dad that we were, we were going to be sitting down here. My dad's a big baseball fan. I said, w what question would you ask Doc? And he said he wants to know what player – you had the most satisfaction of striking out. So the uh, guy that you loved striking out the most. That's a great way to end it. I would say Gary Sheffield, my nephew. Oh, that's right. He is your nephew. <laughs> I mean, he, he was a tough out. But the thing was, you guys were a secret. We, we trained together. My dad taught both of us at a young age. We grew up in the same house. He's my sister's son. And I know you guys remember how Gary used to go to bat. Yes. Well, when he used to go real fast, he used to think fastball. Yeah. When he used to go real slow, he used to think all speed. So when he got traded from Milwaukee to San Diego, I always tell a catcher, don't give me the sign until I see what Gary's doing with the bat. So I knew what he was looking for, so I knew what pitch to throw. But I didn't share with my teammates because he's still family. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good uncle right <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, All right, well, thank well, you guys for having thank me. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Uh, Thanks, everybody.